a former president of the United States, who wants to be the next president, is now directly spreading the slogans of the conspiracy cult QAnon, as well as posting a crude, sexist, and misogynistic slur online. Reposting, to be precise, which means he didn't come up with it himself, but liked it so much that he wanted the rest of the world to see it, which is both a gentle introduction and a warning. One posting of several uses two QAnon catchphrases, nothing can stop what is coming, which refers to the so-called mass arrests of so-called deep state members, which in the warped world of QAnon is basically anyone who has irked Donald Trump. Another posting shows President and Hunter Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton, Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, and Vice President Harris in prison in orange jumpsuits. Dr. Fauci and Bill Gates presumably there for their advocacy of vaccination. Again, this is what the former president of the United States chose to rebroadcast to and amplify for his many followers. He did not look at this stuff, chuckle silently to himself if that's what he would do and move on. Instead, he wanted to give it the stamp of approval of the 45th and perhaps the 47th president of the United States. And then there is this, a photo of Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton. The caption, which I'm not going to read out, is demeaning of both women and contains a vulgar reference to oral sex acts. Now remember, again, this is the Republican candidate for president and the 45th president of the United States talking about two women who, no matter what you think of their politics, are two of the most accomplished women in American political history. This is what he chose to amplify, which, as extreme as it is, is not exactly out of character when it comes to him and women. She was uh, by far the nastiest to Joe Biden. There was nobody nastier than her. She was extraordinarily nasty to uh, Kavanaugh. She was nasty to a level that was just uh, a horrible thing. She was probably nastier than even Pocahontas. By the racist Attorney General of New York State, Letitia Peekaboo James. How about low IQ? Maxine Waters. Amorosa is obviously the ultimate villain and, and uh, the nastiest. I think it's a very question nasty question rhetoric. when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. But just moments ago, a Harris campaign spokesman put out a statement quoting him now, Donald Trump is out of his mind. If a family member posted what Donald Trump is sharing today, Americans would rightly be concerned. But this is what Donald Trump and his Project 2025 agenda offer America, prosecuting political opponents, using dangerous conspiracy theories to justify harmful policies, and dividing Americans against each other. I want to get perspective now from two CNN political commentators on the right and left, respectively, David Urban and Ashley Allison, also CNN Newsnight anchor Abby Phillip. Um, I mean, Abby, I, I don't know why anybody would be surprised, but it is still... I mean, the reason we're leading with this is it, it, this is, guy was the 45th president of the United States. Very well could be the next president of the United States. And the stuff he's putting out, I mean, the QAnon conspiracy stuff, I mean, this is a, like a, this is a dangerous cult, which really, you know, has infected a lot of people's lives, destroyed a lot of families, targeted a lot of people. Um, and then the, you know, the, the sexual slur against his opponent and, and Hillary Clinton, it's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also Trump. And I think as the montage that you all played really lays out, it's a part of his long history of doing this. I mean, there was even an Omarosa clip in there. That goes all the way back to The Apprentice, to the early days of The Apprentice. By the way, the, the last soundbite of him insulting the reporter was you. Right. Yeah. And so, look, Trump, especially when he is under pressure, that moment between me and him on the White House South Lawn was a moment that he was particularly under pressure because of the Mueller investigation. And when he is in those moments, he resorts to, I think, his most base instincts, which are conspiracies, personal attacks, particularly personal attacks against women and people of color, but women of color in particular. And this is exactly the kind of Trump behavior that his advisors have been trying in a lot of different ways to steer him away from, to avoid. Uh, they almost got there because the race was heading in their direction. But now that this has become a real contest, Trump is is taking the reins back and going to the things that he understands and knows the best, which is attack, attack, attack. But, you know, at this moment, I think the Harris campaign, I, I thought their response was really interesting because they didn't talk about the personal attacks. They, they talked about Project 2025, and what they're trying to argue is that Trump is just 
not all there, and that regular people, when they look at these posts, should be concerned about them. This is exactly the kind of argument that hurt him in 2020 and will hurt him in this election as well. David Urban, you know, the campaign said this, we're going to see Trump on steroids. I don't know if the steroids have gone to his head. I don't know if they're injecting him with DECA or, or how much they're giving him. But, I mean, does it make any sense to you? Is it defensible at all to, to go after your opponent with this, like, sexual slur? I know they do it on Fox News as, as, as innuendos, yeah, but... No. So, so... Yeah, Anderson, look, cl clearly um, I'd like to see it go in a different direction, right? I'd like to see the president spend that time... Look, if you want to attack Kamala Harris, attack Kamala Harris, but attack her on banning fracking, attack her on wanting to end private health care, attack her on wanting to confiscate Americans' guns, attack her on all these pra crazy positions that she's had that are that, and make, make her defend them, make you her answer this, those questions. You said this, you said this, I mean, we, you and I talked about this a couple, I don't know, a couple days or weeks ago. You <laughs> said this face-to-face -to, -face to the former president recently. I, I, Anderson, I will share with him. I, hopefully I'll see him again this Friday and I'll share again with him. I think it's, you know, lost opportunity, lost time. Um, if, if we're, if, if the Trump campaign is going to win on November 5th, we need, to, the president needs to focus on those issues that people care about. People care about inflation, the economy, the border, all these things Kamala Harris is very, very vulnerable on. And she would much rather be, you know, trying to, trying to make the Project 2025 malarkey, to put it, you know, uh, in Joe Biden parlance, stick than having to defend her own crazy positions. And so Donald Trump is by himself, he's letting her squirm out of these crazy positions she's taken and not defend them by, by you know, by him, he, he has to go on defense now. So I, I will again um, urge the former president to kind of stick to the knitting here and, and talk about the issues that people care about, their pocketbook issues, the bur the, the border. Yeah. Um, you know, you heard Eric, even, even Eric Adams says immigration is killing New York City, right? We have Democrats agreeing with him. So. Um, you know, we just need to get President Trump on message here. Ashley, <laughs> uh, I mean, w you know, what happened to the short-lived notion that, that, you know, Trump is going to stay on message, focus on policy, stay away from personal attacks? That certainly was, I don't know if it ever lived, even if it was short-lived. Yeah, I don't know if I even ever believed it. Look, um, here's what I will say, is that the reason why Donald Trump continues to throw these attacks and not talk about the economy or not talk about immigration because that's actually not why he's running for president. He doesn't actually care about those issues. He cares about himself. And so <laughs> the fact that he cannot untwist himself and, and be an adult and a grown man and have a real adult conversation is because that's who he is. And that's what he is doing. He is showing himself who he is. So I'm fine with him doing that. Continue to do that. Remind the American people that we don't want that as a leader. But what I do want the, the Harris campaign to also remember is that they do not have to meet him where they are. I often say, the first lady used to say, when they go low, we go high. Let the vice president stay high. I'll match the energy for Donald Trump and bring the heat towards him. The vice president is qualified, is capable. And for all those Americans who are sitting on the fence tonight and wondering who is going to fight for you, Take a look at where Kamala Harris and Tim Walz were today. They were in rural Georgia. They were talking to students, some that looked like them and some that didn't. They were talking about the opportunities that they want for them. They want them to, to work hard and, and find the future. The people they were talking to couldn't even vote for them, but they care enough about them to show up. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is on Truth Social and X putting slurs out towards women, towards people of color. That's the choice you have. And I fundamentally believe that Americans will make the right choice in November. And there is a place for you, even if you don't agree on everything that the vice president or Tim Walz or even I say, there is a place for you in our big tent coalition to take this country in a new direction and not where Donald Trump wants to do it with hate, divisiveness, and derogatory comments.